I'm not a consumer, nigga. You feel me? Like, I don't consume. I'm not just a scroll. I'm not on Instagram just straight scroll. Like, man, come on, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be. So, so when you when you think about the NFL, Jay-Z, and then, uh, like, the NFL is supposed to be wrong with working with the young black youth. What's your take on that? Do you think that uh, there could be more done as being influential in that, in that area? And then well, talk to me about what you're saying about Lil Wayne. <laughs> What do you mean by the uh, the NFL and Jay Z? Well, well, when, oh, so so that initiative came after all the police shootings and stuff like that. Mm. He's supposed to be he stepped in, and then you know you had to kneel and and stuff like that. So you a young black man that grew up probably you got you got people grew up in the project. You a young black man that kind of grew up maybe a little bit better, but probably going through the same situations of being a young black man. If I'm not going through it, I'm seeing it. You know what I'm saying? So talk, speak and on that. Your family, I'm seeing it. But like, I don't know. If it's a foundation that's going on with the NFL, like, bro, there could always be something more done, bro. That's the NFL, bro. They choose to spend money on what they choose to spend money on, bro. There could always be something more done, you know? It's just what they want to do, like, you yeah. know? My opinion is, uh, like, man, move, move crazy about that. Have you heard the latest buzz about Oprah Winfrey? The internet is going wild with some shocking rumors, and it honestly feels like something out of a thriller movie. People are saying she's allegedly left the U.S., and somehow, footage connected to Sean Diddy Combs is tied to all this. It's a lot to take in, but since everyone's talking about it, let's break down what's really happening. Take this particular tape and then distribute it, because that's what he said, He's been she's been distributing it to for a price, and ain't nobody said nothing in all these years? As much hate as Oprah get, you think they wouldn't have put that out here somewhere? Man, I got this from Oprah. Somebody would have been put her on blast. Because yeah, of the man. stuff she owned. They didn't, simply for the fact because they want to own what she owned, they to put her on blast. So that don't even, just from a business standpoint, that don't make sense. I just, I'm like, I'm I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> Steve, Steve, let me bring you in. Same thing. What are your thoughts on this? And do you agree with Dr. Umar? Well, first of all, I love Dr. Umar. Sometimes he can be a little bit too woke. But uh, Dr. Umar, first of all, uh, I'm going to say this. Your outfit is terrible. I've seen you wear better. You the outfit, them Chinese folks fooled you on that band. Uh, that outfit, shirt, hat combo is awful. But listen, I oh my, the food. <laughs> awful, it's awful. But you know what, man? I he is right. I, I feel like people are trying to um get rid of uh a lot of our uh, high profile black celebrities. I really believe that. Um with this thing with Diddy, is a lot of evidence against him. But this Oprah thing is really, really kind of far fetched. Seventy five million dollars, you know, to, to to get the baby oil chronicles. I, I, what well she she handed them out. You get the chronicles. You get the chronicles. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. And by the way, Oprah, I think she was a victim of. So why would she be in on something like that? I just that that's kind of far fetched. So I, I'm not buying that. But I do agree with Dr. Uma, and then. Yeah. Yeah, and Steve, you know, he's he's specifically talking about YouTubers. You know, typically these are people who don't have credible sources. Um, typically, I know here, you know, because we are based on YouTube, we always try to, like, dig, you know, dig deep. Where did this come from? Who said this? Who said that? Do you think there needs to be a real penalty? Because I don't think there's a real penalty other than you saw Pierce Morgan, who got a cease and desist. But, you know, it's like, oh, you, you apologize and you take it down. Do you think there needs to be a more crucial penalty for people who are spreading? The claims hint that Oprah's unexpected absence could be connected to Diddy's ongoing legal troubles. He's currently under intense scrutiny due to serious allegations, casting a dark shadow over his current circumstances. How many other famous people and big executives are probably involved in this? These brave victims who have stepped forward deserve nothing less. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry that really wasn't a secret at all has finally been revealed. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us. People claiming to have been victimized 
by Sean Combs. We now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. So they said they vetted. That's what it caught out right there, but they were vetted. 120 people. Claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. We also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. That being said, as stated, we are vetting every call that we receive. We have had to turn away some. For each, we ask for corroboration. For each, we ask for the identity of witnesses. We also have collected pictures, videos, texts. We check venues. We check dates. We want to corroborate that the claims being made have legitimacy and merit. We have on staff now a former detective from the Major Offenders Unit of Houston Police Department who is helping us vet each claim. We're using our common sense. We're being stringent because, as I said, these are not easy cases. They're very tough. The process is hard, and in some cases, the process is very lengthy. These cases are hard to prove. Many times, it's the victim's word against the alleged perpetrator. Each of these victims will no doubt be publicly attacked by the alleged perpetrators, and in some cases, the general public. The feckless and cowardly keyboard warriors love to attack. We know what we're up against. Wait, is there anyone in support of Diddy? Is that a thing? Does Diddy actually have diehard fans that aren't, like, shitting on him right now? Is that, I've literally never seen a single one. Everyone's just like... As I said, our law firms have been retained by 120 individuals at this point to pursue cases in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. It is evenly divided between males and females. There are 60 males and 60 females who have joined us to pursue these claims as plaintiffs. In this group, 62% identifies African American, 30% are white, and the remainder are Hispanic or Asian. The victims are from more than 25 states. The majority are from California, New York, Georgia. victims. When we talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. Okay, I didn't know about that. I thought this... I swear in my life I did not know about that part. Oh no. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals. At the same time, rumors are flying about some leaked footage supposedly linking Oprah to all this drama. Sounds intriguing, right? But here's the thing. There's absolutely no evidence to support any of it. None at all. Clipped spite Diddy's real legal troubles, the speculation has taken on a life of its own. People are whispering about hidden cameras, wild parties, and shocking secrets coming to light. It's no surprise these rumors are gaining traction, especially with the seriousness. He was, uh, he had sued the liquor company uh, I forget the name. It was a hard name for me to pronounce, but he pretty much won the lawsuit. Um, but, you know, it was explained that in these, um, in these lawsuits, sorry, in these, uh, there's a morality clause. Do you think that his battle against this liquor company could have been what set this off actually, or was this only inevitable? Well, you got, you got to look at it. We all thought he owned Sarah. For sure. He felt like eventually he would be able to get some ownership stake. He didn't. And these issues really started for him once he went after them. Because shortly thereafter, he sold Revolt TV. And anybody who follows him, Revolt TV was his baby. He worked hard on that. Facts. So yeah. once that was sold, I knew the end was near at that point because, you know, just like Gucci man, when he went to jail, he passed his artist contracts off to people who could hold them and fulfill the details while he was gone. That's what they do. They pass it off to people who can put it in a shell corporation. Cause you can have a corporation that have a, a anonymous owner. So once I seen revolt get sold, I knew the end. I, I knew there was going to be a, a tumultuous path for him for sure. Did you feel like it was Diddy's, uh, or do you feel like he was careless uh, towards leading up to this? Like, just, I know you had mentioned him just the way he's moving, uh, you know, he's... Do you feel like he was moving, like, very careless and where, like, that's why you don't have a bond? That's why, you know, you, didn't, you weren't strategic enough in this whole thing? Absolutely, because the agreement was that long as his private jet wasn't in the same state as him, he would be able to stay on the street. The moment that jet came to New York, he got arrested. Mm. And then you got to think about it. Like they got him on audio calling witnesses, trying to get them to change the story. That's extremely careless. Yes. It's almost as if he was used to having someone protecting him. They say, they say he's snitching on Jay-Z. Is that a real thing? 
You don't want to say Jay Z on here, bro. <laughs> Out of respect to y'all, you yeah, don't yeah. Want to say okay, name so that's good. For sure. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna. Diddy has been accused of some disturbing things, including claims that he used hidden cameras at his parties to capture compromising moments. If true, it's incredibly troubling. Now, throw Oprah's name into the mix, a figure known for her immense power and influence, and you've got the perfect storm for a viral rumor to take off. Hey, Oprah. It's no mystery. They've crossed paths many times over the years. From attending the same events to Oprah interviewing Diddy in the past. Believed, and so she ended up doing it on stage in front of everybody, and it was a wet one. And it went everywhere. It was so nasty, and Denzel was disgusted. He grabbed his wife and was like, you don't respect nobody and ran up out of there. So you said that Denzel Washington wasn't down with the program, the Diddy program. Well, no, 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 no. My friend had to do a number two and she was on stage and uh, he wouldn't let let her be rage in front of everybody. And it was a wet one and it went everywhere. It was so nasty. And Denzel was disgusted. He grabbed his wife and was like, you don't respect nobody and ran up out of there. Did yeah. you see people react like that a lot or were most people going with the flow? It was so much going on. The people that noticed reacted, but it was just so much going on. If you weren't right there in that vicinity, you wouldn't even know it was too much going on. But yeah, everybody, you know, and everybody was just walking around zombied out. Like after a certain time when you would make the announcement, if you don't want, you know, the regular party's over, if you don't want to participate in what goes on after. You know, it's just interesting. I just want to bring up Justin Bieber for a second. Shout out to Justin Bieber, man. I'm a Justin Bieber fan. I want to work with him. Man, I have such empathy for you. You are a strong person, Justin. Shout out to you in your heart. You sing when I hear the pain. Now when I listen to your music, I hear the pain in your voice, Justin. All you wanted to do was sing. Your mother caught you playing your guitar, singing, and thought, let me help my son out. Let me let me focus on what God, you know, let me nurture this talent. And she thought she was doing the right thing by taking that video to Scooter Braun. And I'm sure Scooter Brown probably thought he was doing the right thing, taking to Usher. But Usher, why are you doing like that? Views like that? You owe him all his money back. Are you Diddy number two, three, four, Usher? Running around here. I mean, this is ridiculous, y'all. Hey, I'm on a live, y'all. Stop calling me when I'm on a live. That's disrespectful. I'm on live. Stop calling me. Jaguar Wright is watching. She's in the chat. Hi, Jaguar. I love you. Oh, I love if I can work with her. She sings so good when she. Hey, tell Fox to uh, stop calling me. Jaguar Wright is on the. Uh, tell Purple him Rain. Keep calling Purple Rain. Over. Tell him to stop. Right. He keep calling. He called five times. I don't even know what did. Man, you're going to make me talk mess. Tell him to stop. That's ridiculous. Hey, Jaguar. Um. Yeah, I just want to say, man, your voice is amazing. Your Their connection isn't a secret. Combine that with Oprah's status as a global icon, and it's clear why her name would get pulled into something like this. People love to bring down powerful figures, and when two big names like Oprah and Diddy are involved, the rumor mill works over time. He posted a video of his upcoming Halloween party featuring Chris Brown. It looks like it's going to be crazy. You have made mention about Jamie Foxx, uh, you know, and, or he had made mention himself uh, in a special talking about his uh, almost losing his life and his hospitalization was due to Diddy. Uh, there are stories of him getting beat up and getting put, uh, but I know he was, on a, he was on a movie set, but something from an altercation or something from drug related oh, that was Diddy given to will him. Diddy pull up with you by himself. Oh. Like he's not soft. <laughs> so that's the whole thing with him, like you know, he pull up and take something, like it. bro. He'll pull up, and, bro. He slapped Drake. He, he he did, and everyone looked over that. Oh, I'm not gonna call him a gangster, <laughs> but he be on some tough shit, bro. <laughs> and it'll piss you off, like 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 with his son with the with the lip gloss on and the waves all the time. Yeah. He swear he a gangster, bro. I've been like, bro, we'll get crazy with you with him. I mean, uh, I, I, uh, 
it's anyone who probably do a line of cocaine will feel all kind of invincible. Uh, will feel all kind of courageous. With money? It, with money? It's just, it's, I believe they'll do a lot. The outside of normal man, you know, who's rational <laughs> <laughs> and just say, let me post up. But let me get your take on uh, with Jamie Foxx, because mind you, Diddy parties and Jamie Foxx parties were the two black Hollywood elite parties that you would always hear about. That was like, you got to be there to see it. For him to say that I was hospitalized, possibly because of something that happened with Diddy. He thought he was going to tell. <laughs> I don't know if you know about this or seen it. No. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him come on here and tell that, but I'll say this though. I I, I know he said something about Jamie Foxx in a bathroom. Uh, it wasn't Jamie Foxx in the bathroom; it was his party. Okay, it was his party, and then the bathroom situation went down. Here's the truth: just because a story sounds shocking doesn't mean it's true. If there were even a shred of credibility to these claims, it would dominate headlines on every major media outlet. We'd see interviews, investigations, and actual evidence. But instead, all we have is a lot of noise with no substance, like trying to build a house on quicksand. There's nothing solid to support it. I to suicide because the world is an evil place now. So I feel like if you do something like that, uh, I feel like harsh consequences should, should, should take place. I really believe that. Lab, let me get your thought, thoughts on that, because I know we've even had conversations when you've been in studio where, you know, people are on your social media saying things and, you know, they, they see one thing and they run with it. What are your thoughts? Do you, do you think there needs to be a real penalty for people that spread misinformation? 100%, especially when you say and spread things that potentially could dam damage people's brand. Mm -hmm. Because the thing about the Internet is once it's out there, it's out there. And there's, there's no way of pulling it back now. You know, back in the days, a newspaper could retract the story and you never saw or heard that story again. But once somebody posts something on the internet, y'all know, like, we know people screenshot it, other people repost it. Mm -hmm. and so it, it will live on forever. And then, like, the, I, some Steve said, like, the mental piece of it. Mm -hmm. Justin Bieber had a whole mental <laughs> breakdown yep, several. About, about how the industry was treating him and all this stuff right here. Can you imagine if the if these tapes truly exist? People don't care about none of that. They, they just want to just want to post it. They just want to get the clicks yeah. and the yeah. views, and and they don't care about the fallout and the ramifications for this. So I think hell yeah, it should be stiff penalties. It's, it, like if this tape is released. And they can prove who released this tape. They need to go to jail. If yep. and Justin Bieber does something to himself, I think they need to go to jail for that. Held accountable. You know, and I want to add this too, Symphony. I also found out that when they found that, I think it was found as well. I just wanted to put that out there. You know what? <laughs> but it was a it was a chick when that. She, she was doing a little Winnie the Pooh type action, so we good. <laughs> Lab, let me let me ask you this because Lab, like I said, we've had those conversations in studio where, and what I really love and appreciate, like you always do your research. Every time we, we talk about a topic, you're like, hey, that's cool, that's an opinion, that's something that you heard from another celebrity or another source, but it's not credit. And you're always going to find that source. I think information like this can be so detrimental to our community, right? Because you have older people. So. What makes these rumors so captivating? For one, they feed our love for drama, stories of betrayal, hidden, tr hidden truths, and relations are hard to resist. They grab our curiosity and make us feel like we're uncovering a big secret. And when celebrities are involved, it just adds to the excitement. It's yeah, man, bro, like, me and him been outside together 15 years, but well, that's small. Like, he the reason I'm alive right now. He, you feel me, like. He don't really care about money like that. Like he don't really care about a lot of them. As long as he got his jewelry, he got his cup, he got his gun, and we doing our thing, he cool. Yeah, yeah. That's all you need in life. So you know, mm -hmm. whenever I know I got a situation coming up, and you know the risk of dying is high, do God gonna make sure he there? That's what he like to do. Right. But anywhere I take my boy, I have to give him certain guidelines. On this particular day, I say, bro. I don't know what we're going to see in here, 
but we get $2,500 apiece to keep these two models right here safe at this event. Don't get out of my eyesight. <laughs> he said, Gordo, that's my other nickname, Gordo. He said, Gordo, I love you, but I got to go to the bathroom. I said, okay, bro, the bathroom over there, I think. <laughs> so I'm over here dealing with them. So now here I go. I gotta say, y'all stay right there. I come over here. Five dudes in the bathroom. Everybody passes their ankles. One dude even had no pants on at all. He even had no socks on. He getting extra crazy. I'm like. Shout out Big Duga. Yeah. Shout out Big Duga. That's the thing, bro. Like, bro, these, bro. So, right, let's do it like this. Let me ask Niggas you. Niggas would get mad at me. I wouldn't plug them with celebrities. You don't know what you asking for. And when I see certain guys, I say, yeah, you definitely getting your cake stuck. Because you too thirsty to go be up here. Five in the morning? You want to be in the studio with all dudes? <laughs> Everybody out of ecstasy and cocaine? They sipping liquor. You, know what I'm you the females, my boy. <laughs> Shit. They you the you the female. Oh no. Now Chris Chris Columbus had a story that he told where he was laying down with his wife, and uh, he got a phone call from Diddy like at two in the morning, saying uh, I'm 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 at the hotel, and uh, he's like, yeah, well, who who there? Like, you know, pull up. It's, it's, it's just so, what makes these kinds of rumors so compelling? For starters, they play on our love for drama. Stories of betrayal, hidden truths, and shocking revelations are irresistible. They tap into our curiosity and make us feel like we're in on some big secret. And when those stories involve celebrities, the stakes feel even higher. It's like watching a real-life soap opera unfold. And who doesn't love a little intrigue? Someone put a bounty on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's been a recurring theme. Yeah, got yeah, well, one right now too. Like that. Damn, what's what's the going rate right now? <laughs> well, uh, I'll send you a video. Damn, okay, yeah, shit. In this situation, they have on me. Oh shit! I'm a damn. That's a nigga. What? They have fifty on me. <laughs> they have fifty yeah, on me, bro. And if you don't mind why you put that up, can you uh, speak on why? I mean, I know you're about to send it, but what, for what reason? Is it something you said, something you've done? A female you protected? Maybe it went right, too far? Right, right. So like I had referenced earlier, like my main business model is taking, is protecting females who got the proper resources. So <sighs> these guys, <sighs> you see some strippers or something, bro. Trying to get interested. Oh, okay, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right, Joker, coming to you right now. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah, so uh this is what you did to uh to the young man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had to shoot through the door. And like the dude who said call 911. He got hit in the neck, hit an artery, just shot blood all through the ceiling on the porch, everywhere. Oh, let me get it right, my bad. It's like watching a real life soap opera, and honestly, who doesn't enjoy a little intrigue?
For Diddy, who's already dealing with serious legal issues, this added layer of gossip just makes things even more complicated. It's a reminder that words have power, and spreading unfounded claims can have real consequences in the real world. Out to you for being alive still and not being afraid to talk. You gave me the strength to talk because when I first you know, got the strength to put my uh, story out there, everybody was like, you can't say nothing. You're going to mess up your lawsuit. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And I'm saying, well, I'm filing my lawsuit for justice. Like, it's not, a, it is about the money so I can, you know, set my son up and I can get into counseling and, you know, do all the things I need to do because I can't work a job. You know, I want to be financially straight. But besides all that, I want to work with Jaguar, right? I want to go around and, and, and speak at um, people, victims of the pardon and all that. Like, I put it out there on purpose so he can't do that. That's, I, that was the strategy of mine because I talk about it now. If he try to do it, it's going to look a certain way. So when you said that, like, he ain't going down with the dead and I'm like, yeah, see, my strategy is working. <laughs> do you think Justin Bieber will eventually speak out about what happened? Because he looks he has to. He has to. He has. He's a father now. You think he would take his, his kid over there? Even Usher said he wouldn't take his kid over there. So why you take Justin over there? Why? What did he promise you? What extra did he promise you for you to take that man over, that boy over there at the time, knowing what he was going to do to him? What did he promise you? And then did you receive it? Because you sold your soul when you did that. I don't know if you can get it back, Usher. What's that song you got out? Shit. Your confessions and burn. You're going to let it burn, all right. A lot of people. Are God asking. didn't like that. God did not like that from Usher to take Justin over there, because now it's nothing that Justin can ever do to get his innocence back in that way. He stole so much from him when he took him over there, knowing what was going to happen to him. He wrong for that. Hey, Justin, I want to work with you though. If we can meet up, like I understand your pain, and my homegirl trying to get in contact with you because she was there with you in the room, so. You want to talk to her, she got you. A lot of people are asking about if it will something. Oh, that's liquid ketamine, horse relaxer, muscle relaxer. It's topical. You can rub it on you or you can ingest it. And all of a sudden you become a zombie. Like your eyes are open, you're talking, but you're not there. The demons have jumped into your body and you're, you're like a robot and they're just controlling you. You're doing, he can tell you to go kill somebody and you do it. At this point, you might be asking why people are so quick to believe these stories. The answer is simple. It's all in how they're presented. Sensational language, dramatic storytelling, and just enough truth to make it sound believable. That's the formula that keeps people hooked. So it's kind of hard to fake CCTV footage simply because it's time stamped and um, the pixels in that camera any AI footage, the pixels is way higher than For sure. a normal camera. For sure. So, you know, you got to take that into consideration. I think I'm going to Google everyone who has a $200 million man, uh, yacht. <laughs> we're going we gonna, to we gonna line this. We're going to get close. It's, it's, it's <laughs> hundreds of guys. Who got okay. Yeah, okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Rook, didn't you say you wanted a yacht? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I'm, I'm scared to get money now. <laughs> Bro, it's, it's getting it's scary. The money that changes people, because if you a man who get money, you know that this money is a tool. Right. It's not your identity, and like I'm sure there are things that you wouldn't do for money. Right. So it's not the money that changes people. Um. Rick always told me money only amplifies who you really are. Yeah, you don't know, you don't really know who you are until you get some money. Right. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> that you have anything in the world that you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw you what now. Um Diddy was uh he had sued the liquor company. Uh I forget the name, it was a hard name for me to pronounce, but he pretty much won the lawsuit. Um, but you know. It was explained that in these um, in these lawsuits, sorry, in these uh, there's a morality clause. Do you think that his battle against this liquor company could have been what set this off? Actually, 
or was this only inevitable? Well, you got you got to look at it. We all thought he owned Sarah for sure. 